So by the end of our lesson today, I want you to be able to understand what it means if something has been weathered down, what happened to it. So true or false, the Earth's surface has stayed the same for thousands of years. So think about all the things we have learned. Think about um, boundaries, plate boundaries, all the things that can happen to our lithosphere. So do you think it's been the same? Well, it really hasn't. So that is absolutely false. The Earth is always changing. The surface of the Earth, the lithosphere and the crust are always changing for a lot of different reasons. So here we have a rock formation. It is on a coastline. And so we've got some ocean salt water that's washing over it constantly as the waves come in. That's gonna be weathering it or breaking it down. We also have wind that might be carrying sediment from the sand um, on the beach. That is also very abrasive and will be weathering it down. So over the next hundred years, we're gonna see how this formation has changed. So let's look, this is the same rock, but it looks a little different. Our opening in the middle has grown a little bit. We've got a little bit out of that toe part where it's forming a little hole there. And some of our heel on the right side has been weathered away, it's gone. So we have a little different look. It's a slow change over the last 20 years. However, it is definitely changing. So over the last 30 years, you can see there's been quite a bit of weathering going on. The top is weathered way away. A lot of that is due to the wind and carrying the sediment and the abrasion. We've got a bigger and bigger hole here in the front where the water has gotten probably into the hole and the salt water is slowly eating it away. Our arch has gotten bigger. and We are losing a little bit on our uh, right side from the water and the wind. Now we're 80 years into the weathering. You can see quite a bit has been weathered or broken down into sediment and eroded and or moved away from here. There's very, very little left of our original rock formation. It is primarily due to the water, the salt water and the wind abrading away at it, um, weathering it down and taking it somewhere else. Wow, can you believe it's still the same rock? But where is it? So over the last hundred years, all the weathering from the water, the salt water and the air has slowly weathered it all away. It's abraded it down to almost nothing. I would say over the next 10 years, it will be completely gone. Nothing will be there anymore. All the sediment that was created by the weathering will have been carried away to a new place. So our question now is how did this happen? How are things weathered? What does that actually mean? And what is causing the weathering? So weathering is really the natural process that breaks rocks down into smaller pieces. Important parts there are that it is a natural process and it's breaking down the rocks. That's weathering the rocks down into little tiny pieces, eventually, which we will call sediment. So what actually causes the weathering, or we would call them the agents of weathering? What is actually causing that breaking down of a rock? Well, the first and most common thing we think of is water. Water can um, weather things down in many different ways. Here, it's carrying some sediment and it's slowly weathering or breaking down the rocks, leaving these holes or um, craters, so to speak, um, back in the rock. The second one is one we don't often think of, but oxygen actually causes weathering. The oxygen causes what's called oxidation. It mixes with the um, iron in the metal and some kind of water or other liquid to cause a process of rust. It is actually eating away at the metal. Oxidation is another way that something gets weathered or broken down. 
One you might be more familiar with is called ice wedging or frost wedging. So what happens is water gets into a crack in a rock. It freezes when it gets very cold overnight. When water freezes, it expands. The expansion causes a little bit of a crack in the rock. The next day, it might get warm enough that that water then thaws out. Because it's created a little crack in the rock, that water can seep down further. So when it freezes the next night, it increases the crack. The cracks get bigger and bigger over time as this process of thawing and freezing and thawing and freezing. It can do enough damage to actually break a whole section of a rock off. Plants and animals are another thing that can cause weathering or breaking down of rocks. You don't often think of these, but they do cause weathering, mechanical weathering. So as an um, animal burrows or changes the environment by um, creating holes or tunnels, they are moving sediment around and breaking down some of the rocks into smaller pieces. A plant can grow in a rock. So the roots slowly move into the cracks and as the plant or tree grows larger and larger, the roots expand, which causes the rocks to crack. Wind is another very common cause of weathering, one we think of quite a bit. Um, the wind actually carries sediment in it. We don't always see it, but it's always got something in it. So it is slowly abrading away. We call it very abrasive because as that wind carries sediments and it hits something, it's rubbing against it. Here's a great example where the wind has carried sediment and it's slowly weathered away or abraded away the soil on the sides of where this plant is growing. Right now, there are some roots that are still holding on as tight as they can. But again, over time, as the wind keeps blowing and um, bringing sediment, it's going to slowly, again, weather away the rest of that soil. And then we'll get to a point where the um, roots just can't hold on anymore because they've become mo so much exposed. So we've talked a little bit about the weathering and that we can have water, wind, oxygen, animals, plants, all of those different things are weathering it down. We can divide those things up into two categories. One is mechanical, also called physical weathering, and the other is considered chemical weathering. When you're talking about physical weathering, a rock is actually broken up but it's still the same rock. It's just in smaller pieces. So technically, I could pick up all those pieces of sediment that it created and I could put them all back together and have the original rock. Some examples of some physical would be wind, water, plants, roots, and ice. So the ice wedging where it's breaking off pieces of rock. Those are all physical or mechanical. Again, it's broken up into little pieces but it's still the same rock. It's just like taking a puzzle pieces apart. The puzzle's not together anymore, but I could put all the puzzle pieces back together and I would have the puzzle again. Again, another example would be if I had a piece of paper and I tore it apart. I had lots of pieces now. I could tape them all back together and I could get that same piece of paper. Chemical weathering, on the other hand, is when a rock is broken up, but it's changed by a chemical reaction. I cannot get all the pieces and put them back together. A great example would be oxidation or rust, acid rain, and sometimes water. Um, a good example of this is with the paper. Instead of tearing in little pieces, if I burn it, I cannot get all the little pieces back together. They're gone. They had a chemical reaction that changed them into something else. Let's look at some examples. Mechanical or chemical? Well, I don't see a lot of rust that would tell me oxidation. What I do see is some holes and some um, smooth lines here on the top, which leads me to believe this is probably mechanical or physical. And I don't see any water around, so it's probably wind. Yes, this is wind mechanical. So what do you think, chemical or mechanical? 
Well, when I'm looking at it, I see this rust color, which leads me to believe that it's chemical through oxidation. Let's try again. Chemical or mechanical? Well, I don't see a lot of wind damage and I don't see a lot of water, but I do see something that looks like it might be growing on this statue. That is actually called lichen and it causes a chemical reaction as it actually eats away at the rock or stone. Our next one looks like a plant and we know plants are mechanical or physical. The roots are growing into the rock and as the roots continue to grow and expand, they will crack the rock open. All right, let's try another one. When I'm looking at this, I see that this is all broken up into pieces. I don't see any red like that would indicate oxidation and I don't see any plants. I don't see um, water around it. Um, I don't see any lichen or anything that might be eating away, but I do see lots of cracks, which leads me to believe it's probably physical and it's caused by frost wedging.